Let's move off of the college sports. Let's dive into the NFL and this complete S show that we have had. Owners and PAs are just they, really, really pissing me off. They're Yesterday, trying to I was kill us. on the owner's side. Today, I am not. Uh, yeah, today, the NFLPA <laughs> tells the board that the NFL has proposed a 35% salary escrow. Um, let's see. On Tuesday, economics have come into focus as the NFLPA informed its board of representatives that the NFL has proposed 35% of player salaries be held in escrow to aid in managing costs during the 2020 season. The NFL Network's Tom Pelissero reported per sources informed of the situation. It is now one option on the table. If revenues are infected are uh, impacted on a league-wide basis due to the novel coronavirus. However, it was not well received. Per Pelissero, NFLPA executive Don Davis told players on a conference call, basically, we told them to kick rocks. The NFL's PA or NFLPA's stance is that any escrow deal would need to be collectively bargained. New Orleans Saints All-Pro wide receiver Michael Thomas appeared to reaffirm Davis' sentiments with a tweet that stated. LOL, everyone will sit out and not play until they get their stuff together before we do this. Uh, yeah, 100%. Like, this is... 35% is a lot. For, I, I mean... A lot. And, and my question I, is this. It's not like they get paid their whole contract week one, and so if the league goes to funk because of the Rona by week, you know, nine, you've lost all this money. They get game checks. They get weekly paychecks, like most of America. Yeah. So, like, do you are you asking for thirty five percent of every check goes into escrow and to be held? And then at what point in time do those funds get released? Because, so like, I work in the home business. Okay, I, I do a lot of floors, do a lot of construction. Both parties have to put like the buyer has to put money in escrow, and yeah. the seller doesn't get that money until like a percentage of the build until all warranty things are upheld, whatever, all stuff, and then. Once everything is signed off on by lawyers, because they got to get their piece, then then the money gets released to the other. So, what is the thing that would channel the releasing of the funds to go back to the players? The completion of the season, the completion of the postseason. I mean, they they haven't announced, and that, that's, that's the crazy. I, like thing. you can't just say I want thirty five percent of your check, and not tell me how and when I get it. Putting yeah. in escrow is a safe thing. It's not like it disappears, and it's definitely not sitting in the owner's checking account drawing interest, okay? They they have to pay it out. My question is, is I want to know what the escalators are to cause it to be released to the players. Yeah, I, I, I would like what, to know a lot more about this deal. I mean, obviously, the only information yes, that we have is coming from the NFLPA. The owners won't make a lot of money this year. That, I understand that fear of the owners. My fear is, is if you think you won't make enough to pay your payroll, then, then I'm, I'm a little worried about, I'm a little worried about that. Yeah. Oh, I I agree. Mike jumps in, by the way. Uh, He said for the first time ever, NHL did it right behind closed doors and getting along to finish the season. Baseball and NFL are a mess. And Ben said, it's the MLB all over again. Yeah. I I, I really thought that we would get to this point um, with major league baseball. And, and I didn't know about the NBA, but to, to the NBA's credit, they have kind of kept all of the salary stuff behind closed doors, right? We don't we don't have to hear about that. Uh, Matt said those Gulfstream payments don't pay themselves. <laughs> that isn't that the truth? But this whole situation, and cheers to the NFLPA for coming out and actually putting this out there, because this, this is kind of crap. I'm gonna be pissed. That's what we're looking at. You, last week we brought this up, and it was Friday when they were. It was the first thing about the NFLPA saying. We don't want to play preseason games, which, by the way, they have not decided on whether or not they're going to do two or none. But yeah. the PA came out and said, we don't want to play any preseason games. And then later that night, they came out and said that they wanted 80-man rosters for the season. Like, I get it, but I also, I mean, isn't that what the practice squad's for? Like, you call up, I mean, anyway. So Listen, hang on. I'm not opposed to expanding the roster size due to this yeah. situation, okay? 100%. I'm okay with that. I'm good with all of, I'm good with all of, like, those types of things, all right? I, but here's the problem with the practice squad is if you ever pull a player off the practice squad and, and then you ever send them down, they become a free agent that could go through the waiver wire again. Like, it, like you, have a ten, you have potential to lose that player pretty, pretty easily. Yeah. So, so you want to basically – 
rest- and those players will make more money basically. So you have those practice squad players becoming a part of the roster. They'll they'll get actually game checks and they'll they'll, they'll be higher compensated than what they are. Um, that's good for the union because it's more union paying dues. I do not believe that the practice squad players are um, official members of the union. Um, I might be wrong on that. Uh, so, so I think I think that's a good thing. I think adding players to the roster this season, especially, is nothing but a good thing. They're also, if they're going to do 17 games, they need to add players to the roster just for durability's sake and and, and health and safety of getting well, this, this season. It's only it's only 16, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, if like it's going to be in the future, we're hey. going to be weird this year anyway. We're going to this thing next year. Let's let's expand the rosters. Let's get the coaches and the GMs used to working with whatever the the budget looks like with this many players now, and then let's keep that many players after this because, well, we gave you the extra game, so do we'd you, like this. Do you think um, that the the NFL, like the league itself, is proposing the thirty five percent in escrow because they are actually contemplating the eighty man roster? Yes. Uh, now that could be it, but the problem is, like I said. It's not like they're paying out this money all up at front, all, all, all at front. It, it's getting chipped out. My question is, is if you want 35% to be held, once we've passed 35% of the, or 65% of the season, let me do math real quick, then what happens to the rest of that money? If you yeah. owe me a million dollars a game, all right, let's say you're, you're a big money player, you got a $16 million contract, you basically make a million bucks a game. You owe me a million dollars a game, okay? My question is this. Are you taking 35% of every check? Because that doesn't make any sense to me. And if you're not, and you don't want to pay out that back 35%, at what point in time are you going to pay that out? If we make it to 65% of the season and we go that next game, am I going to get that game check or are you holding that money? And why are you holding That's the money? A, because you got the game. You got the TV money. You got the ad revenue. If we're any tickets to be sold, you got those. So if we're if we're playing the game, why are you holding that extra money in escrow? That's a, like it's a know, great question. I'd like to know why. I, I would love to and know it as when well. When are they going to release it? That's just all I want to know is what's your reason behind it? And then, so I know the reason is, is we're afraid we're not going to make enough money. So let's say you don't make enough money. So what happens? You just get the money back out of escrow? That's not how this is going to work. You know that's not how it's going to end. So it just sits in limbo until you negotiate it? That's not okay either. Let's see. Hold on. We we got 30 NFL teams. Is that right? 32. 30, 30 to, oh, 32. Yeah, excuse me, excuse me. Um, so if we've got 32 NFL teams and we are adding 27 players per team, you're adding and those another. players will be on a league minimum deal of probably yeah. somewhere between three to four hundred thousand dollars. So let let's just say four hundred thousand. Let's okay. let's just round it. That's eight hundred sixty four times four hundred thousand dollars. That is another three hundred and forty five million dollars that the league has got to come up with. It seems like a lot to a guy like you and I. This is a league that makes a hundred million dollars a year in revenue. Under billions, sorry. yeah, and uh, agree, agree, but like, uh, you know, okay. But if you're already worried about cost, anyway. is, is is bare minimum for twenty players. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, who knows? Who knows? But this is going to be interesting to pay attention to because I, I'm, Somebody I'm getting Robert this feeling out a window. You save a hundred million dollars there, so I just cut that in a third. <laughs> But just pushing him down this flight of stairs. I'm I'm getting a little worried that we might not have NFL to no, start off. They'll September. figure it out, but I don't know that we'll have it on time because these bastards are going to play games. Yeah, that that is so. With the NFL, with all these major league franchises, right? Major league baseball, NHL, football, NBA, whatever. We weren't worried about them actually playing because these are professional players. It is their job. They're going to have to go to work, right? So the NCAA, we were worried about how can they make these kids play football if there is no financial compensation. This isn't their job. If it's not safe enough to go to the campus, why would it be safe enough to play? That was that side on there. Now, on this side, well, there's not going to be that much money coming in, so we're going to have to cut salaries or we got to cut costs somewhere, blah, 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 blah. And now with the professional leagues, it is, okay, well, 
we don't feel safe enough, and you're talking about cutting our money. And so now, who plays? Who plays sports at this point? Well, no, the that's what I'm worried about. Think, the pros are going to figure it out. The problem is, is we're just kicking this can down the road farther and farther and farther. And and I'm not saying that these guys shouldn't be fighting for things for themselves. What I am saying is that some of us are sitting at home and we're not doing okay. All right. We're not. Yeah. Right? We need something to distract us because some of us have lives that suck. Okay. <laughs> and it was sports. That may be pathetic. That may be really sad. But I could really use mentally something to focus on outside of work. I need something to take my mind off of the stresses of family and work. We have That's done it. a show every Monday through Friday since the pandemic, well, really before the pandemic started. And and we have talked sports every day, but we may have to learn to dive into pop culture a little more. I know we talked about Johnny Depp and his well, wife well, pooping I, on the no, bed. I'm not yesterday. worried about that, but I'm worried about like the mental faculties of just when this is over, I'm used to going downstairs and turning on, you know, pregame yeah. of, of baseball right now and, and pregame for NBA playoffs. I'm, I wonder I what something, you know what, for two, three hours, four hours, I can block my kids out for a minute. I can forget about all the stresses and problems of work. And when the game is over, all those shit, Things come back. Those problems yeah. are all still there, but I got a little break for two, three hours where I can yell and scream at a TV. Okay, yeah, and that's therapeutic for me. And, and I, and I, I think I, it's I, for like everybody. Said, I've got yeah. a, I've got a pre damn easy life. Okay, I don't have a lot of problems. And these are these are I call them bullshit rich white people problems. Okay, they, they, maybe that's insensitive. Maybe that's a terrible thing to say. These aren't real problems. They're made up bullshit problems. All right, but I would really like to have sports back. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, Damien jumps in. I'm said, mentally it, not doing well. <laughs> I think I think you'll survive. Hey, you got me to call on. You got Sam. You got John. You got Scuzz. You got the whole. You got the whole crew. You're gonna be all right. Do I do I need to come over and pat on your head a little no, bit? We're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Damien said the NFL equals pettiness. Joseph Gomez said Andy Reid wants to add a third quarterback and place him in a bubble in case the virus hits hard. Uh, I think he already added uh, a third quarterback, didn't he? No, um, that was no, and I don't think it was Andy Reid. It was uh, uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Arians. Yeah, okay. okay. Bruce Arians. D- Bruce Arians said that if they expand the rosters, he is going to hire a. I don't know if it's a third. He called it an emergency quarterback. Yeah, and they're literally just going to be responsible for constant quarantine. They're going to be paid to basically live in a hotel room and never leave and have food and stuff brought to them and um, watch game film and try to stay in shape. The bre- be- very much a break in case of emergency situation to where they have a healthy quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Damian jumps in and said, didn't the NFL learn anything from the lockout in 2011? No. Uh, how do no. these people learn anything? Here's but the problem. They, these with aren't the, the same NFL. people, though. I mean, Here's, that's the deal. That's what I was about to say. The NFL average age, or the average length of contract is three and a half, four years. These guys don't play much longer than that. And so when you have a 10-year deal, the people working on the old deal – had nothing to do with the old deal. Yeah. They weren't in the league when the old deal was signed. <laughs> and the people that are going to work under this next deal aren't going to have had anything to do with They're not even in high school yet. Yeah. No, it's true. Ten years from now, half the starting quarterbacks aren't even playing college football right now. It is true. Matt said, imagine being at home and you make it through every single page on the hub. <laughs> Joseph said, KBO, horse racing, and TAG coming soon to WCE. And then Damian said, virtual sports is getting closer than you think. It's the future. And then he put a bunch I, of laughs. I, I can't. I, listen, I might be the last old man on that blog, but I ain't doing it. Now, we, we've talked about it before. Back, I cannot yeah. do video games. I'm not a video gamer. I, the, the, the technology of video gaming in my house, two years ago, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before, I bought my first video game console ever. We bought a Wii for our family. And I had to buy everything used because they don't make Wiis anymore. It is true. But those are really cool. Matt said, have you watched drone racing? No. Uh, no. I've I've seen Rocket Ball or Rocket something. I don't know. One of my friends in San Francisco is really into it. I'll watch a Rocket League. Ball. I'll That's watch it. people get hit in the face with stuff. I'll watch people doing things. I won't watch people sitting on their ass playing video games. I just won't do that. 
Mike said, I agree, I cannot do virtual sports. I can't, I can't get into it at all. Y'all won't have to worry I'm about the, it. I'm, listen, I'm their market product. I'm the guy that should love it. I'm fat and I'm out of shape and I don't want to move a lot. Like, getting couch locked is fantastic. Yeah. I want to get couch locked on a Saturday starting at 10 a.m. with college game day and not move until 2 in the morning when Pac-12 after dark goes off. That's what I want. That's the couch lock I need. Yeah. So, and we'll see. I mean, that, we might have it happen. Who knows? But I mean, good gracious! I'd I'd love to get uh, I'd love to get Felica on. I need to hit him up. It's been a little bit. I'm just I, curious as to what he thinks. I just want to know what these because not that he doesn't have any inside information. He doesn't have any. You no, know, none of these people know. Nobody knows what the hell's going on. But I, well, wonder, I think I, I don't think game day is happening this year. What do other people think about this stuff? Well, when I say it not happening, I mean it, it'll be happening no, no, in a studio. Zoom. Yeah, right. it'll happen. They'll all zoom. We'll see Kirby from his home, and oh, yeah, Lord. it all. <laughs> ben said, "I'd like to not watch Kyle Larson play video games again, please." Golly, uh, Damien said, "Hey, at least we have the dog show thanks to Animal Channel." Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I like watching puppies. That's that's fine, I guess. I guess I need football. Damn it! Like, <laughs> I'm so tired of sitting yeah, around. I, not need, watching I think I need football. I've got a problem. I need I've, football. I've watched so many old games in the uh-huh. past three months. 